I bring duct tape. I mean. <laughs> no, I guess that wouldn't do. Um, Such as an itchy butt. Kids, kids are, kids are usually dirty. do it at night because then you touch. can't even tell. It's sticky. You go to somebody's house who has kids, everything in the house is sticky. The car is sticky. Mm. There's the dog. I'm going to give you my kids now. <laughs> if you start imagining uh, infectious disease being transmitted like this, you will see patients differently. You will see people differently. You will be a little more careful around patients. Um, now, of course, there's always a possibility in those hospital settings where things are light and they float through the air. Um, bacteria are very small. We talked about that. So the bacteria on those tables, I walked by. Even though I didn't run by, I just walked by. I still created a current of air. That current of air lifted those bacteria. And now they're just walking around, waiting for somebody to take a deep breath in and go inside. Same with the viral particles, very, very small, which is why the flu goes around in the wintertime so easily. Why does it go around in the wintertime so easily? Dry air means what? That's for it to latch on to it. Yeah, that's for stuff to latch on to it. Yes, yes. We're yes. closed a lot more. We're close. We shut the doors, we shut the windows, we turn the heat on, that dries out the air, takes all the moisture <laughs> out of the air. You ever drive down the road? And you drive past one of those plastic bags that somebody left on the side of the road, a wall a day or something, and the air just picks up and it just floats, and the next car drives and it zips over that way, and the next car drives and it zips over that way. What happens on the rainy days? It's on the ground. It's, it's on the ground. It stays on the ground. All that water, that extra um, that moisture keeps weight on, adds weight to it. And so it's on the ground. It settles much faster. In that dry heat that we have in the wintertime, these particles just stay airborne a lot longer. From you to me to me to you to you to you to me to me to you to you to me to me to me to you to you to me. It's a lot easier to spread them around. So I guess I'm saying we should open a window. It's got me going off on to some parasites. We were talking about parasites. Have you heard of Chagas disease? No? Chagas disease. C H A. <laughs> Chagas disease. Kissing bug. Because it kisses you right on the face, right here, or in the cheek, or on the neck. Uh, it's a blood meal. And the nice uh, thing about people in the wintertime, or any time, actually, uh, when they're sleeping at night, they have their covers pulled up to here, what part of the body is exposed? Face and cheek and neck. So they come up and they get a nice little blood meal. While they're feeding, uh, they're defecating. So you can see a little thing of poop right here, a little bug poop. Uh, but well, you can't, you're asleep. And of course, that little um, area where they drank some blood, add a little anticoagulant, cause it to itch a little bit. Now the person's going to itch, and they just move that fecal material right into the room uh, where the AMAS, the, the, um, the early form, the early, I don't want to say larval stage, just the pre-larval stage of the uh, trypanosomes. It's a little... It's a cool looking worm. You gotta look at it. Do you see it? Yeah. yeah. Trypanosoma no. cruci. Very cool looking. It has a long flagella. Kind of like a sail on a sailfish almost when you move through the water. But these are in the blood. By the way, that bug, the uh, kissing bug gets pressed in. Yeah. And that's why I said it because I saw one over there by your feet. That freaked me out. I'm just kidding. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily carry the trypanosome. Just because it's here, it doesn't necessarily have it. Uh, you see it a lot more in the southern United States and South America. Yeah, it's the furthest one. Interesting one. Though. Related to... Um, That's what it is? Yeah. Related to Trypanosoma brucei gambians, brucei brucei, which is what causes African sleeping sickness. You may have heard of that one. The mm -hmm. TC fly? The bite of the TC fly causes? Where is it? Oh, you put it away, all right? Yeah, that's it. Get a picture of it, um, the trypanosome in the blood. Very cool. I'm a big fan of parasitology, <coughs> microbiology. All right, since we have time, one more thing. <laughs> Staphylococcus aureus, most common cause of acute food poisoning, right? Most common. Next most common cause is something that you are going to think I'm lying about. I'm going to tell you this, and you're going to give me that look like he is not talking about. Bacteria. 
bacteria is called Bacillus cereus. Have you heard of this? Bacillus cereus, related to Bacillus anthracis, the one that causes anthrax. Bacillus cereus, very, very common bacteria. He is found in recooked rice and recooked pasta. No. People will say, well, that's not right. I, I go to Olive Garden, I come home, I eat the leftovers later that night, take it right out of the fridge, eat it, I'm fine. Or I put it in the microwave, heat it up, I'm fine. Well, yes, if you reheat it that way, or if you just continue to eat it cold, that's fine. The problem is these places, like the buffets, they will put out a pan of rice or a pan of noodles towards the end of the day. One or two scoops get taken out of it. What do they do with the rest of the noodles or rice? Refrigerate it? Yes. Put plastic wrap over it, put it in the refrigerator, put it in the walk-in. Perfectly acceptable, not a problem. The problem is the next day. See, when they reheat it, they're supposed to reheat it very, very hot, like it was when it was originally cooked. But people get lazy and they just put it right in the steam table. So instead of getting a flash heat, they get a nice, warm, gradual, jacuzzi-like heat. So the bacteria there, instead of being killed, actually get to grow and grow and grow and grow. Same sort of onset of signs and symptoms, same sort of vomiting almost every hour on the hour. Definitely we'll see some more diarrhea thrown in at the end. It'll last for a little bit longer instead of going six or eight hours, maybe eight to 12 hours, and the person's probably gonna feel beat up for about two days rather than just one. But the treatment's still the same. Good with fluids, lots of relaxation. But I know you're thinking, come on, you can get food poisoning from reheated rice, reheated pasta. Be serious. Yeah. You see, that's, thank you. That's the name of the bacteria, B, Syria, C, R, E. <laughs> it's one of those things they teach you in medical school and you just never forget it. And now you won't ever forget it. And now when you go to one of those places, you'll say, can you please put this in the microwave? Or even in the wok, because that flash will hook it up. I don't know why. Okay. Uh -huh. Did that Okay, I think we, oh, you know what, I did pass up some stuff that I wanted to go back to. Somewhere. That's the set. Internal, superficial. Internal, even inside. Superficial means more towards the outside. Deep, of course. Away from the body surface. Think of something like your bones. Your bones are actually pretty deep inside of your body as compared to the layers of other tissue around it. That's an important thing to remember because the body doesn't expect there to be bacteria, or at least not a lot of bacteria, around your bones. Why would there be? Where would we expect to find a lot of bacteria? More towards the outside. So where does our body put all of our defenses for bacteria? More towards the outside. As you get deeper and deeper, the body has less and less of those defenses. Doesn't need them, shouldn't need them. Until somebody has that uh, fracture, or a radius sticking, or the limb sticking out. And now we have a couple of problems. One, we have the fact that the bone is pulled away, which means we may have some avascular necrosis. Um, some uh, blood supply has been cut off to the bone, which of course is living tissue. So we can end up with necrosis. I don't know how long it would take until we saw a reversible cell death, but if I had to guess, I would probably say, I'd say about six hours for that, let me see, give or take. But now you have to think, okay, now this is exposed to the outside world, which means now it has all the bacteria that this wall has on it. All the bacteria that you have on you is now on that bone. And of course, if it's in the dirt, well now we have even more problems. So we really have to make sure that's clean later on. Uh, so that we can minimize infection. That's why you see orthopedic surgeons going to surgery. Orthopedic surgeons, you know, the bone doctors. But they don't have just a skull cap and a mask and, a, and some gloves, t-shirt. They have actually a full suit with a hood, with a little fan in the back to keep them cool, because they know they're going to be working on bones. Minimal immune response. So they do not want to contaminate their patient. That's why they're dressed like that. They want to make sure they keep their stuff outside of their patient. Internal, external. Um, all of those also, again, you have to understand with all these directional terms, we often have some sort of reference. So something to be more internal than something else, but external to something else. You know, the muscle, muscle here, pectoralis, major muscle. 
that you can say is internal as compared to the skin, but the fatty layer in between, well, I know there's not much fat here, but the fatty layer in between, you can't tell what the sweater is, the fatty layer in between is more external than the muscle, but more internal than the skin, right? So we'll still use that one point like that. Okay, nice image of cyanosis. What is cyanosis? Blue. A bluing. It's a, it's a condition, really an abnormal condition, of bluing. Central, of course, you get this self explanatory as this purple. Acrocyanosis, we see these on the babies when they're just out. That's why they look all blue, especially their head, their extremities. Covered with the case in the first the cases. Uh, you've seen them when they come out, they're all gooey. Yeah, pretty disgusting. And the babies have a lot of hair. People don't realize that babies are covered with hair, especially in the uh, months just preceding the birth. Because the, uh, the covering that the baby is in, this mucosal like covering, it actually protects the baby's skin from the amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid is very acidic. About a third of the amniotic fluid is made up of baby urine. So it can actually damage into the skin. So it has to keep this, this little covering on itself. One of the things it does, it keeps uh, the hair, helps to keep the stuff in. So if you look at a baby at like seven months, six months, they look really, really hairy. I, I bring this up because when I say, uh, feel free to ask questions, which is where I was like 20 minutes ago. Feel free to ask questions, just don't make them too personal. People will say there's no such thing as a dumb question. I have a list, actually, <laughs> that have been asked in classrooms that will one day be a book of dumb questions. Um, things like, if you talk badly about a pregnant woman, will you get a sty? A sty, of course, the little staph infection on the eyelid. Or if you look at the stars, where you get a sty. Uh, and for treatment, do you pee on a rag and put the rag on the sty? And will that treat That's it? Fine. These are actual questions. Sounds Is like baby urine good. good for acne or good for the skin? No. <laughs> Don't put urine on your face for any reason. If you get punched in the breast, we get breast cancer? No. I don't know where you're hanging out. But, you know, if you shave your arm, shave your hair, will you get skin cancer? No. When we eat ribs, are we eating human ribs? Please tell me these children do not. These are these are real questions. Did they pass? Yeah, most of those did not. <laughs> One of my favorite ones. If a you can't record this. This is going to be trademarked, copyrighted. I'm just kidding. If a person dies and they're in the morgue, can they laugh? It would have to be a really, really funny joke. <laughs> that to that's, that's one where you say, thank you and good night. And you're done. I think we're about to take, uh, take a pen.